I'm John Robson, and this is the Climate Discussion Nexus Readout, Episode 2. Every Wednesday at CDN, we put out an email newsletter called the Wednesday Wake Up. It discusses the big climate news of the past week, some opinion, and some scientific information. And then in these readout videos, I take one or two topics from the newsletter, and I offer some quick extra commentary. If you want more in-depth information, go to our website and subscribe to the Wednesday Wake Up. Also, have a look at our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We begin this week with breaking news from our January 29th Wednesday Wake Up. Canada is not on track to meet its Paris Accord targets. Why weren't we told? Of course, if you've been paying attention to the news, this won't come to you as news at all. In fact, it's long been predictable. First, there's the small matter of our not having a plan to meet our targets. There's the carbon tax that's too low to bite. There are the industry exemptions. And there's the long history of empty words. Behind all that, there's a major scientific and technological issue. And that's why what we're seeing with Paris is just a replay of the Kyoto Protocol, where Canada and every other country made a great show of signing up for ambitious emission reduction pledges, and then went home and ignored them. To be fair, you know, at least in those days, Jean Chrétien didn't pretend he had a plan, although that didn't stop him from denouncing his opponents for not pretending they had a plan. But there's a very good reason why he didn't have a plan and couldn't make one and why the climate issue always comes back to the same old stalemate. And it's not because people don't care about the environment, not the activists, not people like us. In order to understand it, I invite you to have a look at our videos on the Paris Accord, because one thing we talk about is the acid rain issue in the 1970s and 1980s. That was a case where people got very concerned, they made a plan, they carried it out, and they succeeded in bringing harmful emissions down to very low levels. It's a great success story. But, as we explain, there's a big difference between sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide when it comes to technology and economics. The main difference is this. You could take sulfur out of fossil fuels and they burn just as well, maybe better, but you can't take the carbon out or they don't burn at all. And that's why all the speeches and protests in the world and all the shocked and sad news stories can't save flawed strategies like the Paris Accord or back in the day, Kyoto. And another key point, which we talk about in the videos, even if everyone meets their Paris targets, it'll be no use to the climate, even if carbon dioxide is causing the climate to spin out of control. You see, according to the computer models, the same ones that say we have a problem, full compliance with Paris would reduce global temperature in 2100 by just one tenth of a degree. Not worth doing, makes no difference at all. But it would destroy our economies, meaning not only that we couldn't adapt to whatever climate change did come along, but that we couldn't even feed, clothe, and shelter ourselves if nothing happened. So it's important that people learn why climate policy so often amounts to a costly failure, and that they realize there's nothing noble about politicians wasting resources on policies they know will do more harm than good, or at any rate, that they should know will do more harm than good. Excuse me, folks, I'm just gonna interrupt the video for a moment here to say how grateful I am for all the people who are signing up for the newsletter and who are watching the videos. We've been at it for about a year now, and it's so exciting to tell you, we are now at about a million total views. It's wonderful that so many people are finding it useful. And now I wanna make the pitch, pass the hat, because we are crowdfunded. We depend on people like you. We don't have government grants, we don't have research chairs, and despite what a lot of people seem very certain of in the comments on our videos, we're not getting huge checks from Charles Koch. Okay, we need support from you. If you've been enjoying our videos, if you find our newsletter valuable, go to climatediscussionnexus.com and make a pledge, one time or monthly. And let me just emphasize here that every penny helps. Sometimes I think people feel like, well, I can't give enough to make a difference. There's no point, I can't give $500. What we need is a whole lot of people to give us $5 a month, $3 a month, 
$2 a month. That's what will let us continue to produce the videos and the newsletter. Again, I'm so pleased that so many people are watching the videos and finding them helpful, which probably means it's time to get back to the video. Oh, another item from this week. There was this study that supposedly showed that children would be hardest hit by climate change. But when we looked at the details, it turned out the health hazard they highlighted wasn't from greenhouse gas emissions. It was from breathing in particulates. And those aren't even connected to global warming. Instead, what they are connected to is poverty, to burning low quality fuel like twigs and dung indoors in third world countries. And the solution to that problem is to build more power plants and get people using electricity for cooking and lighting, or natural gas. Instead, what's happening? And this is a real tragedy here, a human tragedy, is that under pressure from climate activists in wealthy countries, leaders in poor countries are cancelling plans to build new power plants. That guarantees continued poverty, which is an abstract phrase meaning it guarantees that children will continue to breathe lung-destroying smoke indoors in shacks and shanties. You see, the threat here to children's health isn't from climate change, it's from bad climate change policy from politicians who are believing things they're being told by alarmist activists that just aren't supported by the science. There's more in our newsletter, including some good news about sweet peppers, and unfortunately, some bad news about the level of political spin creeping into climate science journals. So again, I invite you to visit climatediscussionnexus.com and sign up for the Wednesday Wake Up. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson.